Hello and welcome to the Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements inside the video games industry, discussing with you some things you may know, some things you may not, and the glue that holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching, and let's kick off another episode. PS4 owners, your last fortnight has been embroiled in controversy. Get it? But there's some good news on the horizon, with the news emerging that it seems like anyone who is a subscriber to the PlayStation Now service is soon to be getting the ability to download their games just like what we see from Xbox's Game Pass service. Let's talk more about it in this week's episode. So for those of you who aren't super aware of PlayStation Now, that's totally understood. PlayStation Now is a service like Xbox's Game Pass that allows you to, in the case of PlayStation Now, stream games from the PS4, the PS3 and the PS2 directly to your console and you can play those games via the cloud. Now the downside was that it required a fairly substantial and really impressive internet connection and in a lot of regions, including this one, Australia, people didn't necessarily have the means to be able to do that and it was causing a lot of problems and there's been a lot of feedback that Sony's been receiving and it seems like that news has finally perforated their skulls. A download option was spotted by an eagle-eyed PlayStation Now and Reddit user called Satatech and he posted it on Reddit and it got a little bit of steam and people started chatting about it and then there was more news that broke and we'll talk about that next. So I think my first impression was quite similar to yours and many others when they came upon this news. Great, PlayStation owners, PS4 owners, are going to be able to stream in excess of 650 games that are currently available on that service, PS4, PS3 and PS2. And we're thinking, great, that's so many issues and complaints wiped out and in doing so, they actually leapfrog what Xbox was doing. Players could choose to stream or to download and it wouldn't really matter which way you went, you'd still have a great service either way, but for those who downloaded directly to their hard drive, you'd have low latency and all the perks of having a game installed on your system. Not quite to be though. News is broken courtesy of Rich Stanton of Kotaku UK, who alongside a source did a little bit of digging into this whole situation and revealed that when this service does roll out, and supposedly that is September, players will only get access to PS4 games. And, much like what you'd expect from a PlayStation Plus subscription or Game Pass, those games that you access are only yours whilst you keep paying the sub subscription cost. As soon as your subscription lapses, you lose access. Now that's pretty normal, but it's just something to keep in mind as we progress through this story. Now 90% of this news is fantastic. The fact that players can pay their monthly cost and they download whatever games they want that are available on that service is awesome. There is that one downside that I spoke about before where you won't be able to download PS3 or PS2 games. Something that uh, if you're an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, you can do. You can download Xbox 360 or original Xbox games and it's all just part of that same cost and everyone wins. They're getting updated with tro uh, achievements in terms of Xbox, hypothetically trophies if it happened for PlayStation. But we don't know anything more about that at this point. You would have to think that at first, if these uh, rumors are supposedly true and that it does launch in September, that PS4 will be their way of testing the waters and then they'll gradually roll things out from there. But it is a very interesting place that we're in because the PS3 ran on a very well, it was proprietary tech. The cell processor was something that caused developers a lot of issues at the time. And I'm not too sure how that's going to translate across to the PS4. Will they be able to talk to one another really well? Will it still be just essentially emulation and the PS4 just does all the work there and there's no real dramas? And the same idea for the PS2? Who knows? But we need to learn more about that in the future.
So there's a larger story at play here, and it involves many different aspects of the PlayStation online service that have kind of underwhelmed. Now, let's say this rumor happens to be true in September's the, uh, the time they launch it. That could also be folded into a larger announcement that could contain the PSN ID change situation. Now, anyone who's owned a PlayStation, PS3 or PS4, or even Vita, knows that you can't change your PSN name, and that sucks. But it was confirmed by Sean Layden last year at PSX that that service was well underway and they actually seemed like they were fairly close to an announcement. They implied to Greg Miller, who was hosting at the time, that he wouldn't be asking the same question of them by that time next year. Now, where that announcement slash launch kind of kicks off remains to be seen. Maybe that's all talk and maybe it's not actually eventuated. But I could see these two things going hand in hand, maybe a part of a larger firmware update, a significant firmware update that rolls out a whole bunch of these features. So what we see with PlayStation now, what uh, might occur with the name changes, and, and this is perhaps a big one that's emerged in the last two weeks, maybe that can sync up with a backflip from PlayStation regarding this whole cross-play situation. I spoke about this over a year, about a year ago, in a previous Insider episode, I think it was episode two, and I spoke about PlayStation's stubbornness and stupidity when it comes to their lack of willingness to play ball with Xbox and with Nintendo when it comes to PlayStation gamers being able to play games such as Fortnite or Rocket League and a whole range of others with their friends on other platforms. If PlayStation were to come out and go bang, bang, bang with these three announcements, that would be huge and it would really put a different spin on some negative talk starting to emerge about PlayStation lately, where they're getting a little bit egotistical, where they're getting a little bit laid back and they're resting on their laurels and there's cockiness. There's, there's some negativity starting to follow that PlayStation name and an announcement such as this that includes those three things would make a massive difference to the way people perceive PlayStation going forward. So that concludes another episode of The Insider. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. All those buttons are down below here. And hit that notification bell. That's also down here. That'll alert you to any new video that goes live on the channel as it happens. That includes things like Patched, The Video Games Club, The Insider, Player 2 Plays, The Late Game Review, and much more. There's some awesome content there, so please make sure to go and check it out. For written content, make sure to visit the website player2.net.au where you'll find reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, the Player 2 Writer's Draft, and much more. There's some awesome content there. Our E3 hub is still there from E3, so please make sure to go and check it out. We've got some awesome talent contributing for us, and we'd love for you to see what they've got to say. We're also on Patreon, patreon.com slash player2au, and consider kicking in a few dollars. At the lowest tiers, you'll get early access to episodes such as The Insider and Patched. And at the higher tiers, you'll get exclusive episodes. And at the top tier, you can join us in the Monthly Player 2 podcast. We'd love to hear your voice on the show. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Consider kicking in a few bucks. You'll help the Player 2 dream grow. We'd love to see you. For rolling updates, you can find me at Paul James P2 on Twitter. The website, you can find at Player2AU on Twitter. And before we wrap everything up, I want to say a big thank you to you, the listeners, the viewers, because this week marks one year of The Insider. I kicked this thing off after E3 2017, wanting to talk about God of War, and all of a sudden it became this series that's gained a bit of legs. Um, I've really enjoyed doing it. I've really enjoyed talking and interacting with you, the viewers and listeners. It's been awesome. We're now a year down. We've done more, I averaged more than one episode per week, thanks E3. And I've really enjoyed every moment of it. So thank you very much for coming along with me for the ride. But that concludes this episode of The Insider. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.